Welcome to Econ 104, Introduction to Macroeconomics. In this video, we're just going to be doing a quick introduction session to the course on whole, taking a look at the D2L site and overviewing kind of what you need to know in order to be successful in this course. So let's jump over to the D2L site, see what's actually happening over there, and start working through everything you need to know to carry forward. So let's jump on over. Okay, so here we have our main splash of our D2L site. So to get to this, uh, if you haven't been familiar with D2L already, this is online.comosin.ca. All of the courses you're registered in will show up there. In this case here, you want to navigate to Econ 104 Macroeconomics, and you'll notice you'll have your specific uh, section number listed beside it. Uh, here logged on, I'm showing for the online section, so you'll notice that there. And this is the main splash page. Here on this main splash page, we have along the top our toolbar. We'll come back to these. This is going to be an important aspect of our navigation. Beyond this main toolbar, we also have our news site. This will be where all of our updates are posted throughout the semester. Right now, we just have a nice little welcome letter, just giving essentially this video's worth of information, just in text form. I'd say there's probably a bit more information in here, to be honest, but some basics there. So definitely worth to have a quick read through. As we carry forward through the semester, all of our little news updates, uh, anything happening in the course, anything of interest, this is where it will show up. So this is your main one stop. Uh, on the right hand side, we have myself there, uh, and office hours, of course, by request. And then carrying down, we have your calendar, and you have when things are due by. So the due dates as we carry on throughout the semester. Okay, so that's course home. That's just the main site that you get to when you go on. First one that you really want to go check out, and if this is the only place you ever went to, you'd be just fine, is our checklist. So what we see here is we see weeks one all the way through week 14. Uh, we have some extra content there, not covered or examinable. This is sometimes we get to it, not necessarily if you're in the online section, but sometimes in the face-to-face -face section we can get to that content and the final exam. The basic idea here, this is your stop. This is where you want to go to and be, hey, week one, what am I doing? What do I need to get done in order to be successful in this course? Well, you click on week one. This opens up a little checklist for us. And what we see in the checklist is all the tasks that need to be completed for this week. So week one is one of the larger ones to consider here. And we have, well, read the syllabus, watch the introduction video. Well, you're watching it right now. So success, you got to this part here. Uh, your week one introduction. So it's just your discussion post. Every week you have a discussion post worth some participation grades. For every week, you must post your response and reply to another student in order to receive the grades. Uh, every week, you'll have some textbook readings. A uh, big idea with these textbook readings, it's really going to be the videos that are examinable. The textbook readings are just there as additional information, additional resource for you to kind of get a bit more breadth in understanding. And as I said, your videos as to what to watch. This is as your lecture should be. Finally, complete quiz. So once you have all of those done, you can just hit save and close that and then carry on. And right, you can just check them off as you go through just to say, okay, great. I've got done everything I need to get done in week one, save, and then carry on. We see, hey, they were all saved successfully and completed. So let's close that window down. Okay. So week one, six items. If we take a look at more of a realistic week, jump over to week two. Okay, here we see for week two, same kind of idea. Read the textbook, bit of a chapter. Uh, chapter six is the link to there. Watch videos. We have our three videos to watch in this, uh, in this scenario. Complete your quiz and complete your discussion. So this is going to be your typical week, what you're looking at doing. And really, as we go through this, big things, your weekly quizzes, those are graded, you get marks from those. Your weekly participation and discussions, those are graded, you get marks from those. So those are the weekly things you wanna make sure you hit. And if you follow along with these checklists, you'll really be on track in order to be successful in this course. So that's really the big thing to see with this checklist tool. And let's go carry on and take a look at the rest of these toolbars there. 
Okay, so carrying on, just moving along from the left to the right. So we've taken a look at Course Home, the main page. We've taken a look at the checklist, taken a look at discussions. Now, of course, the discussions were always linked directly to where we needed to go through the checklist. But we also have other discussions that maybe we're interested in. First of all, there's the frequently asked questions here. So right now, not necessarily populated, but we see that it's broken up by week. And what we can do is we can post on here, say you have a question about micro foundations, you can post the question here. I may answer it, another student may answer it. Uh, you may email me a question and I may say, hey, that's a great question. I think the class could benefit from seeing that question. So I'll take that question and I'll post it here onto the frequently asked questions and then answer it. Uh, one of the big things, if you see a question posted on this and you think you know the answer, definitely try to answer it. I will then post afterwards saying, hey, yeah, they hit all the points, nothing else to add, or hey, great response, I'd just like to add this to it. Uh, they say that, hey, being able to teach others is one of the highest forms of learning. So really to cement your understanding is the ability to be able to teach others. So if you do see a question in there, please feel free to go and answer it yourself if you feel you know the answer. If not, I will be there shortly. I check this daily and I will post updates as need be. So that's the frequently asked question. I'm just going to collapse that. If we scroll down in these graded discussions, we see, okay, hey, this form contains weekly graded discussion posts. Big important part, to obtain full marks each week, you are expected to make a relevant post and reply to at least one other student's post with some feedback. Okay, this is the big part. Every semester what ends up happening is people make their post and they spent lots of time and effort putting through their post and their response and it was a great post but then they forgot to reply to another student. Then comes the time I go through and I mark them and I give them a zero for that week. And there's upset and there's tears and why did I get zero? And it's because you only did half the work and it's all or nothing for this participation point. So in order to make sure you get it, make sure that you post your response and make sure you reply to another student. Big part there. These are not graded, correct or wrong, or what you did right, what you did wrong. It is entirely your prerogative to kind of figure out, hey, what was the right answer based off of looking at other students' responses. Some of these posts don't even necessarily have a right answer. Some of these are just strictly opinion posts. All of these graded ones, they are linked directly through the checklist to which one you need to do. For example, week one introduction. This is the first one. Post for the semester, quick introduction, um, kind of, hey, what you did over your break, what are your interests, hobbies, do you have a job, some fun facts about you, et cetera, et cetera. And again, for the first one there, I say, hey, also remember to post to another student. Uh, big thing for all of these ones, you need to start a thread before you can reply to others. That is, you won't even be able to see what's posted here until you post first. Not that big of a deal for the introduction, but really what that does is prevents you from taking a look at everyone else's posts, copying them, and then making your own. Of course, I see students trying to find ways to get around this, making little fake posts that are just empty to get access, and then, hey, they get the answer, and then they post it themselves. That is getting into the realm of academic misconduct. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the course, but definitely watch out for that, as in don't do it. Uh, as we go through, we see that, hey, every week we do have a discussion post to be posted. Again, all of these are posted in the checklists and something to be taken a look at through that. Okay, carrying on, next one, quizzes. Again, our quizzes, these will be linked through the checklist. And what we have is just a midterm practice to upload images. Don't worry about that. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to the midterm. But big one as we go through is all of our different quizzes. So quiz one, quiz two, quiz three, on and on and on. Each week we have a quiz which needs to be completed. So something to take a look at there. And again, all of these quizzes are linked through the checklist. Carrying on again from left to right, we have our collaborate tab. Collaborate is just where we're able to hold our virtual meetings, our virtual office hours, as it were. So in this case here, if ever we want to meet up for a session, we can just click on this Collaborate tab, click on the course room, and join the course room. Once you're in there, it's just like Zoom or Skype or Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts, any of these other versions there. We can share content, we can talk, we can have video, all of that. 
Uh, so anytime that we're going to meet up virtually for office hours, that is where we're going to meet. Carrying on left to right, we have our grade session. In our grade section, we're going to have our quizzes, so 10 quizzes all together. We're going to have our participation grades, so 14 participation marks. I say 14, there's nothing for week 7. Week 7 is our reading week. And then midterm 1, midterm 2, or term test 1, term test 2, and of course, the final exam. Uh, what we'll see with this is kind of how your grades are determined for the course. We see that 15% of your grade comes through these weekly quizzes. For these weekly quizzes, you have unlimited attempts. You can redo quiz one as many times as you want until you get 100% on quiz one. Same with quiz two, on and on and on and on. The only catch is the quizzes, which are going to be covered on a term test. So, for example, we'll say quiz one through five is all content covered in midterm or term test one. Well, quiz one through five will have a due date of that term test one. So they will expire before the end of the semester. So don't just let them all kind of build up until the end. Definitely recommend you work on them weekly as you go through. Uh, you'll notice this a little bit here dropped. Uh, what we do is your lowest two tests, your lowest two quizzes rather, not tests, your lowest two quizzes are dropped from your calculation of your final grade. So right now, because they're all zeros, because nothing's been done, it just takes the first two. As you complete quiz one, quiz two and three will get dropped on and on and on and on. Okay, carrying on. Participation, that's worth another 15%. And this here is just your posts to D2L discussions. So just your weekly discussion posts. That is your response and a reply to another student. Another 15%. So that is we see, hey, 30% of your overall course grade is just due to weekly kind of participation and weekly completion of these quizzes. Uh, in reality, this should be a fairly easy 30% to obtain. Uh, the quizzes, just by review, studying, getting to know the material again and again and again to get that 100%. These discussions, just by participating. So should be pretty easy for that 30% if you put in the time and effort. We have our first term test, or midterm one, which is worth 20%. We have our second term test, or midterm two, worth an additional 20%. And we have our final exam making up the final 30% of the course. So our course is laid out for grading all together. Uh, when is midterm one? When is midterm two? When is the final exam? Great questions. Well, final exam, we don't actually know when that is yet. This is posted onto my commotion early in the semester, usually sometime after the first month. The date can be found, of course, on the Mike most important dates as to when the final exam schedule is posted, mm -hmm. but usually early February or second month, so if this is the fall semester, early October, this is posted, and it is available to see, hey, when is my final exam date, when is my final exam time, and you can begin planning as of that time. Midterm 1, midterm 2, or term test 1, term test 2, when do they take place? Well, those will be noted in the syllabus, and so... On that note, let's carry on and take a look at our next tab and go on from there. Okay, underneath this content tab, everything you need in this content tab is going to be available to you through other sources, so either through the checklist or through the news site if I'm linking to something here. Uh, one of the big ones that you want to take a look at right now would be the syllabus. Uh, in this case here, this video is being recorded for the 2022 winter semester, so we see 2022 winter syllabus loaded there. Um, but for your semester, it'll be your syllabus that is in this spot, and would just recommend opening up, taking a look. This is essentially our contract between myself as the instructor and you as the student as to when things will happen, expectations, how grades are determined, what our course schedule is, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through it here because, of course, it does change every semester, but highly recommend you take a look at this. If you do have any questions about the syllabus or uncertainties, please feel free to send me an email, and I'd be happy to walk through it with you. Final one to take a look at along the top is the class list. I'm not going to get into the class list right now because it is populated with a current group of students, and I don't want to bring all the students out publicly but you will be able to see your section's class list there, everybody enrolled in your section. Uh, what I highly recommend is that you do go into that class list, especially if you are enrolled in an online section, and you go and you upload a picture of yourself to that. 
Uh, the reason being is it just allows for a lot more humanity as we begin to discuss with each other, as we begin to talk with each other throughout the semester. It makes it seem a lot less like we're just talking to a bunch of numbers and letters on a screen, and we can actually put a face to the name. So it just helps to make the whole thing a bit more personal. So I'd highly recommend that. Of course, if you're not comfortable in doing it, not a problem, no requirement, just a strong recommendation. That does us for our introduction. That does us for our overview of the course website, course D2L site, I guess. Of course, as we have down here, if you do have any questions, I am more than happy to help. Uh, feel free to either post your questions to the D2L Frequently Asked Questions. Feel free to ask to meet me for office hours. Very flexible. Be happy to make your time work for us. Meet through Collaborate. Or, of course, feel free to send me an email and be happy to get back to you.